What is going on dudes and lady dudes? Welcome back to Just Nuts. Guys, today we got a little discussion video. Okay, today I'm talking about generators. We got two new cards revealed in the last couple weeks, I would say, two weeks-ish. Uh, for the it set it comes after Ignition Assault at the end of the month, so we get Ignition Assault on the 31st of this month, January, and then three months later down the line we're going to get two more cards in Eternity Code. And we also have a card in Ignition Assault. So we've got some nice buffs going on for this deck. And, and what's interesting is this came out of the deck build pack Mystic Fighters. Um, I didn't initially have my eye on this deck. I thought the first time I read it, I was like, this seems like a bunch of bricks. We know Blue Eyes are Bricky, Red Eyes are Bricky, Dark Magician Bricky. All these decks just play like big monsters that don't summon themselves from the hand. But this deck handles it much better because it has one central piece, the field spell that holds it all together. It is the glue. Um, now, I also have a thing in my head that kind of gets to me sometimes. When I'm interested in a deck, and then I see that there's good support for the future, I kind of like don't want to play the deck yet, because I'm like, why am I going to play the deck right now when like the deck changes so much when these cards come out? And obviously it depends, because sometimes there's support that comes out for decks, and it's like, not amazing it doesn't change that much in the deck it's nice it power creeps the deck a little bit and like bumps it up a little bit but like this this these new cards or at least one and two of i would say two of them really really change how the deck might be played and so you know we're gonna go over that today so this is just a standard like regular build i don't even have the extra deck filled but i have you know i guess regular stuff you'd see some weird options you might want to consider in the um, side um and then most of just regular stuff going on in the main you've got lone fire to turn turbo out in mardell because mardell gets you a search on summon for any generator card which is pretty good uh frody pops monsters unless your opponent draw cards equal to the amount you popped i don't like him i want him to go um Needhog is like negating summons. Hella's bringing back generators from Grave. Uh, Develga's special is a generator from Hand. Um, Nagglefar protects your cards from being destroyed. Um, Utgard is the one coming in addition Assault. That one uh, is a quick effect to tribute two generators to target a card your opponent controls and banish it. That's very, very strong, especially since they don't get to redraw off that. That's why I like this more than Frody. Because if you have the field spell, like that doesn't matter. That you're tributing two instead of one it does not matter at all. There, Ash, the field spell's incredible. Um, special summoning a monster every time a card is added from your opponent's hand, deck to their hand, which includes their draw phase. So they draw for turn, you special summon um, a disruption, probably Utgard now, and then you just get like four tokens, and then Utgard is live, all off of just that, which all off just their draw phase, and if they ever add cards during your turn, also good. Really, really strong. Um... Boss quest just getting you two two of your generator spells and traps, so field spell and like maybe something else. I don't know exactly what else. I guess boss fight is a follow up, or boss room if you play boss room. Um, extravagance like the deck doesn't really care about the extra deck, not a big deal. Could you carry amulet? Another new card, not literal support for the deck, not a name like specified to be for this deck, but this is like a very level nine. I mean, look at it. Look at just this build. We're playing twelve. 12 level 9 monsters, that's easily enough. This is literally trade-in, but for level 9, send a level 9 from hand or field to the graveyard to draw 2. Just digs you deeper. Um, World Legacy Monstrosity, if you have level 9 on the field, you can target it. So let's just summon 2 more level 9s from your deck with different types and attributes. They're almost all different types and attributes, so that should be very, very easy to do, um, which is really nice. Um, Generator Boss Fight, this gets you your field spell, and then it lets your opponent draw a card. That's not the best, but I'm and I'm not sure about this ruling 100%, but be because I think this is a then effect, I think it might activate boss stage, then let your opponent draw, and so boss uh, stage might be up on the field for your opponent's draw, which might allow boss stage to activate. I'm not 100% sure on that, but um, I think that might be the ruling. Uh, Metaverse, again, just another card that does this, and then in permanent, it's just more disruption if you can have it. Um, and then in the extra deck, like, our boss monster, he doesn't really do much. Fuck him. <laughs> True King of All Calamities. This is like one of the insane disruptions. Uh, this is an interesting card because it can just pop like multiple cards. And then um, Enter Blathnir can also just banish cards um, depending on where you want to banish cards from. Uh, and then Masquerade is also interesting because if you play World Legacy Awakenings, interesting card. Once you summon like four tokens, sometimes you can't even use all your tokens by tributing them. So if you have Awakens, you can link, activate this, which lets you quick effect link. So you could you take two of your tokens into a Masquerade. And then the Mascarina can take uh, the third a third token into Unicorn, 
and then just give you a Mascarena play on your opponent's turn as well. Um, which is not that bad. I mean, it's not great. It's definitely not great. But it is extra disruption, and sometimes uh, you got to take disruption where you can get it. So, um, yeah, that's mostly it for like a pretty standard buildup of this thing. But the new cards we're looking at, really, are Lopter, the Shadow of the Generator Boss, and also Whore, Generator Boss of Rumbling. And I'll start with Lopter because I think he has the highest impact here. Um, you can only control one, same thing with all of them. While he's on the field, all generator monsters gain 1,000 attack and defense during your opponent's turn, which is very nice because your tokens are 15-15, so those become beaters at 25. Same thing with him, he becomes 25-25 as well. But the big thing about him is he has a quick effect, where during the main phase he can tribute any generator monster you control, does not have to be himself. It's a special summon a level 9 generator monster straight from the deck with a different name than the tributed monster had on the field. That is very, very good. Um, what's so good about this, one, is that he doesn't have to tribute himself. So if you have another one, you can tribute another one. On your opponent's turn, if he's up, you can tribute up your token to get one straight from the deck and still keep him on the board. He's buffing everything by 1,000, 1,000, which is very, very relevant. And the other thing is um, if your field spell gets Ash, so if, if your opponent draws for turn and you attempt a special generator straight from the deck, your opponent might Ash that. If you left a Lopter up, like you normally summon a Lopter, left it on the field, until your opponent's turn. Then your opponent activates Ash. Ash is this, so you don't get that. And you don't get your tokens then. But then you can just use Lopter. He's a quick effect. Tribute Lopter, summon a generator, and they already use their Ash. Then you get your four tokens. Boom. Like right there, that could already be like enough to just like be like your opponent already went neg one in the hand. And you got like at your whole setup. You got a bit a boss on the field with a bunch of tokens. It could be Utgard, it could be the new guy, whatever you want. Could be Need Hog. Need Hog's pretty good as well. So versatile in the way you can play this, um, especially if your um, stage resolves and gives you all those tokens off after the special, then this guy's like tributing another token to get a second boss monster out. And then you've got a whore plus a neat hog. You've got a negated special summon and a quick effect to banish built into big boss monsters that are annoying to get off the field. Very, very good. And maybe you like, keep on the field to see what your opponent's playing. Then you tribute to see what kind of disruption you want. You let them activate the first card to see what, to give you an idea of what they're trying to play. Um, if they're trying to play something where Needhog's negate is going to be key, or if you're playing something like Orcus, maybe Utgard as the banish is key. Depends, but it, um, it, it can really give you some insight on what you want to go into there. And then we also have Hor, General Boss of Rumbling. He's very, very cool as well. You can only control one of him. Same thing as always. Once per turn, if your opponent adds a card or card from their deck, adds a card or cards from their deck to the hand, except during the draw phase. This is except during the draw phase. You can activate this effect. Your opponent must send one monster they control or in their hand to the graveyard. Not bad. And also when a card or effect is activated, quick effect, tribute two generator monsters and or spellcaster monsters. And if you do, negate the activation and uh, destroy that card. So then it's just a negate. Just negate and destroy. Omni negate, pretty good. I like it a lot. Um, yeah, I think, so like most of these cards, what we see is they have the disruption effect, and that's it. This guy's a disruption effect, plus the other effect. Listen, meta decks, you know what they do? They add cards to hand, whether they're playing draw cards, whether they're playing uh, search cards, they just do, okay? It just, they, it just happens. So, with Whore, it's very, very nice to just say, send something. And I know that might not be the best against some decks, like Sally's. They just drop a spinny in grave. Great. They put it, they, like, it didn't do that much. But at least they didn't get to summon the spinny. Like, depending on certain hands, they may need spinny as a normal summon. Now they can't. Um, it may force them to send hand traps out of their hand. Or if they just had a handful of spells and traps in one monster, they have to send that monster. Orcus wants to send. That's not the best situation. But, um, you know, at least it doesn't let them get the material on board and then put it in grave. So it does depend on the composition of their hand, but it can be very nice against a lot of strategies, a lot. Um, and then just a negate is very solid as well. He's 3,000, 3,000. Don't forget that. That is huge. With the And he becomes 4,000, 4,000 if he's on the field with Lopter on your opponent's turn, which is very good as well. So he becomes like our, pretty much the best boss monster now. And so he power creeps some of the other boss monsters we were playing, and Lopter just helps so much. Lopter does so much. I cannot emphasize it enough. He makes the deck so much more consistent. Even if you can't even get to the field spell, you could just normal summon him, tribute him for a Need Hog, and because Need Hogs only tribute one, you at least have a negative of a special summon. You at least got a disruption up. That is super important. Um, very well. So um, I like, I, I love it. 
I think the support is so cool. I'm really excited to see where the deck can go from here. Um, yeah, I think just consistency-wise, versatility-wise, and I think it also might allow you to build a deck in slightly different ways. Um, there's stuff like Lone Fire is the only was the only legit normal summon prior to Lopter. I'm not sure if you even play three and three. You might, because that's still only six normal summons in the deck, so it's, it's not even that bad. Um, <clears throat> oops, I lost connection. Whatever, that's not important. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, it's just... I don't know. I, I'm really excited for this deck. I really... I like right now, I think it's like not that great. Utgard helps a little bit. Hor helps a lot. <laughs> His name is Hor. I just realized when you say it. It looks like it's spelled different. Like it looks like it sounds different, but when you say it, it's straight up Hor. <sighs> but yeah, he is a legit power creep for the boss monster. He's the best boss monster in the deck now. And Lopter is just the best card in the deck. Like this and your field spell are like the best cards in the deck now. Uh, he's so good. So good. I really hope you guys don't underestimate him. And I don't want you to underestimate this deck because I think this these cards could straight up make this deck a legitimate regional competitive deck. I, could, I think we will and probably should see this deck top in regionals. Um, you know, once these cards drop. So let me know your guys' thoughts down below. Maybe I'm just overemphasizing this. Maybe generators are already too far in the hole, being built around level nines. You know, you lose a lot of consistency that way if you just brick on those cards. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts on, on, on where generators end up after this stuff, because I think they're pretty interesting, pretty legit on a rogue status. So let me know your thoughts. As always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more discussion videos like this in the future. We do have a couple of support cards. We have Dolce stuff. We got Witchcrafter stuff. I could do videos on that kind of stuff. And I love just talking about decks. <laughs> I just love talking about it. I love doing like theory videos, um, speculation videos, all that stuff. I, I love it. So... Yeah, let me know your thoughts down below. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.